Hey everybody, this is Fide Master Kostya Kavutsky here for Chess.com and today I'll be doing the US Chess League highlights for week 4. A lot of interesting games, a lot of tough battles and I'm going to be showing you guys some of the more interesting positions and tactics that came out of this past week. So the game in front of you right now is between I am Levon Altunian of the Arizona Scorpions against I am Eli Vosha of the Manhattan Applesauce. So White has a really clear advantage here. They've got the super nice center. All their pieces are in the center and looking good. And their rooks are connected and the king is perfectly safe on c2. Black's pieces are all really passive. And their rooks are disconnected and their king is stuck on d8. So clearly White has a really nice advantage here. But what are you supposed to do next? You've gotten in the nice position, you've built it up. And at this point, what you should be looking for is some kind of breakthrough. You want to convert your advantage into something more. So I am Altunian finds this move d5. And this is maybe the most natural move I can think of. You play this move d5, you're opening up your rook against the opponent's king, you attack this pawn on e6, and Black's position is, is in serious trouble here. Since White's pieces are so much more active, the fact that the position is opening up is beneficial to them, of course. So now if E takes D5, White will take back with the knight. Knight takes D5, Bishop takes D5, Black should probably capture again, Rook takes D5. And White's turning Rook takes H5 and Rook D1 winning Black's knight. So Black is losing at least a pawn here and has pretty much a losing position here. So I am Vovsha played e5, trying to keep the position closed, but now the bishop on g7 is just a terrible piece, the bishop on f7 is bad, the knight on e7 is bad of course as well, and the rook on g8 isn't doing anything here. All of white's pieces are now aimed at black's queenside, and here Altunian played the move knight a5. And this is a really good move, just attacking the b7 pawn, forcing black to make some kind of weakness. Black played king c8. And here came the next move of White's attack, d6. We open up an attack on the bishop, we attack the knight. I mean, when your position is this good, these kinds of tactics just come so naturally to you. Bishop takes c4 was played, knight c4. And if black takes this pawn, we simply take back with a check. King moves somewhere, and let's say knight takes b7. And because this knight's hanging, white is winning at least a pawn here and has a winning position. So knight c6 was played, knight b5, again attacking this pawn, a6, knight takes c7, rook b8, bishop b6. And I think black got kind of luckier in, in that they only lost one pawn from all these uh, attacks and breakthroughs. And of course with an extra pawn and much better position, uh, I am Altunian really had, had no problem converting this into a victory. And this game ended up being third place in the Game of the Week contest. This next game is between GM Alex Strapunsky of the New Jersey Knockouts. And playing black is GM Malakachian of the Los Angeles Vibe. And here Strapunsky came up with the move Rook E8. And I think here he actually calculated several moves ahead. Because he came up with a really nice idea to win this endgame here. Obviously white is clearly better. They've got an active king, active rook and a good knight and they're trying to play against black's weaknesses here on b7 and e6 so he played this move rook e8 malik played king f7 and here rook b8 so he brought the king to this f7 square and now he's going after this pawn and this all looks great for white except for the move rook g6 and it seems like black is getting counterplay against white's knight on g3 the knight has no good squares to go to, obviously doesn't really want to go to the h1 square because that would be just too passive. And it seems like white is definitely not better. But rook takes b7 check, king g8, knight h5, and bishop e2. And again, it seems like white is just losing the knight. But here comes Strapunsky's idea. He played f5. So he's attacking the rook and this pawn. And if black takes this pawn, he'll play knight f4 winning material. So black is forced to play rook g5. Now he's attacking this pawn and the knight. And here comes the really shocking move. Knight takes g7. 
So all the way from the beginning, all the way from the move, Rook E8 and then Rook B8, I think Sierpunski had this idea in mind to sacrifice his knight so that after Rook takes G7, Rook B8 check, King H7, and F takes E6, White gets this incredibly strong past E pawn, and now their king is perfectly placed to uh, just take all of Black's pawns. And even though Black is an extra bishop here, their position is pretty much hopeless. There's no way they can stop this pawn from queening and defend their own pawns on c6 and d5 and a6. So Kachin tried rook g4, trying to activate his rook somehow, e7, rook e4 check, king d6, bishop h5, and here Sierpunski simply took the c6 pawn. Now if rook takes d4, white will win back their piece. And with such an active king, you know, this endgame is simply completely winning for white. Just king d7 and c6, c7, c8, and white is winning the game. Instead, Kachin decided to play rook takes e7. And now here comes a really strong move, rook b7. Instead of taking this pawn or going after the a pawn, white simply trades rooks. And after the trade of rooks, their king is just going to take this a6 pawn and the b pawn will run forward. And make a queen. So the game ended. Bishop e8 check. King b6. Rook takes b7. King takes b7. King g6. He grabbed the a pawn. King f5. b5. And here black decided to resign. White is simply playing c6, c7, b6, b7. And making one if not two queens. So a really cool piece sacrifice in the end game. And this victory ended up getting Strapunski the second place in the Game of the Week contest. And the last game I wanted to show you guys is this one. This is between GM ML Anka playing white for the Seattle Sluggers against I'm Alak Tom Bartel playing for the Philadelphia Inventors. And this game wasn't perfect, but it ended up winning Tom Bartel the Game of the Week because with black... He was able to beat our Grandmaster in a really sharp game. This obviously came from a King's Indian defense, and the position is quite unclear. But clearly something has gone wrong for White. The Knight on h2, Rook on h1 are really bad and passive pieces here. And Black's bishops on f5 and g7 are clearly dominating the center and the queen side. So after Knight takes d6, White's idea was that if Rook d8, they'll play Knight takes f5 and... If black goes for the queen, white will take their queen with a check. If rook takes d7, rook takes d2, white will be up a rook and easily winning the game. But instead, Tom Bartel found the move bishop takes b2. The point being, after king takes b2, rook d8. Now knight takes f5 doesn't work because rook takes d2, comes with a check on its own. And next move, black can move their queen and easily win the game. So after king takes b2, rook d8, GM Anka played queen a5, counterattacking the knight, but here queen f6 check was played, king a2, rook b8, clearly black is just on top here, they've got this open b file, super active queen, white king is incredibly unsafe, and their pieces are still not doing a whole lot on the king side there. So knight b5 was played. Pretty much a desperate move. C takes b5, bishop d5, b takes c4. Black has no problem giving up this rook because white's king is still so hopelessly exposed. Rook d2 was played, king g7, and bishop takes e6, bishop takes e6, rook e2. And here Bartel found a really nice way to finish off the game. He simply played c3 check, king a1, c2 check, queen e5. Seems like white gets to trade queens and maybe can escape in the end game, but for bishop f5, things are pretty much clear. Black is threatening rook b1, queening their pawn, so white is pretty much hopeless. The c pawn is, is too strong here. Queen takes f6 was played, king f6, rook e1, knight c5. This knight is coming to d3, and, you know, the game is just over. Knight f3, knight d3 was played. Rook f1, rook b3, and white simply resigned here. Point is rook takes a3, threatened his checkmate, and after king a2, black can play either bishop e6 or simply rook b2 check, 
king a1 bishop e6 and white has no defense to rook a2 checkmate so a really cool attacking game a nice victory for the king's indian defense and for tom bartel and this one ended up getting him game of the week for week four so i hope you guys tune in to all the u.s chess league action we're covering it every week on chess.com tv check it out tuesday and wednesday nights Till next time, this is Fide Master Kostikovitsky signing off.